Twitter. This is the Mineral Planning Commission regular meeting for Monday, July 8th, 2024. It's uh, 7 p.m. Kind of all get started by having Hannah um, call roll. Commissioners present in establishing a quorum. Commissioners Blair, Bull, Dawkins, Lockhart, Lowe, Nugent, and Petrino. Again, all of us. Thank you all for your attendance. Appreciate it. Um, next item is public comments. This is the time for people to speak to the Planning Commission in person on issues relating to the City of Mineral, except those issues subject to public hearing. When invited to speak, uh, please make uh -huh. your uh, self known, and you will uh, ask that you state your name in association with the city or area of residence. The timer will then be started. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. And do we have anyone that would like to get their three minutes in? Okay, fantastic. Appreciate you, Dad. Actually, can I say something? Of course, you know. Sorry. Yeah. Who said that? I just Why who said that? <laughs> Susan Davis. I just wanted uh, to touch base with you guys. I had previously sent out um, some comments on the draft SEIS. Hopefully you guys got that. Yes. Okay. And I'm making some more modifications to it. So you need new tweaks, um, just specifically on the urban growth area. I'm covered in urban growth area, so I'll send that like my business leader for the next. Next item is I didn't see any, so we have none. No minutes. No minutes. Okay. So we'll move along quickly to new business. And this is item 7.1, Monroe 2044, comprehensive plan update, introduction to chapter eight, capital facility, and chapter nine utilities, and that's the updates. Yeah, thank you. So this evening, um, I was thinking it could go a couple of ways. I could have done separate agenda bills, but they're really combined. And uh, the 2015-2035 chapters were actually together. Um, we have been asked actually by our city attorney to separate them because capital facilities get a little bit different treatment when you do um, your annual or biannual capital improvement plan. It gets um, typically associated with your budget process, but the state law is very clear that it has to be your capital facilities, not utilities. So they have been uh, separated, but looking at all of our layers of policies from the Growth Management Act to Puget Sound Regional Council, Snohomish County-wide um, planning policies, I felt it was kind of better to, to lump all of that background information together. So um, under GMA and Imagine Monroe. So there isn't a specific policy or statement in Imagine Monroe, but it really does help us achieve the housing, the uh, a strong economy. Um, and so I just, I tried to synthesize that into one paragraph. Uh, for the Growth Management Act, both the capital facilities plan and utility plans are um, required. The capital facility plan is a little bit different also in that it includes essential public facilities, which if you had a chance to read the chapter, you will see that there is a section there that summarizes what an essential public facility is, as well as listing out the facilities that exist in the city of Monroe. So for us, that includes the Department of Corrections. Uh, we include uh, First Air Field, anything that's really big and hard to cite. So that is included in the capital facilities plan. Utilities um, is generally limited to um, electricity, telecommunications. Monroe has chosen over the years to also include solid waste. So you will see um, some information about Republic in there, who is our current provider. And then I just provided some highlights from uh, Vision 2050 and Snohomish Countywide Planning Policies. Uh, we're trying to implement or be consistent with those documents as well. So like all of the other introductions, you have a homework assignment. Uh, if you could review and provide me comments by July 17th, that would be appreciated. And I'll send those along to um, our consultant team. I also do want to point out in the capital facilities plan, I am still preparing materials specifically to this fire district and the hospital district. 
Um, I'm not sure why, but the hospital district has never been included in the capital facilities plan, but it is a public district. And so I wanna capture that this year. So I'm um, working with the district as well as Evergreen Health, who are the current vendor for the hospital. So you will get those in the next iteration. Both documents are very similar in structure. We have an introduction, um, how it relates to other planning documents. Um, eventually, piece, there are also additional pieces missing. It does not have any of the financial documents, which will be summarized. It does not include the list of projects that we hope to um, do in the short term, which would be that first six years and in the 20 year range. Those will be coming soon. Um, I did get an update at a meeting with our consultant team today. Uh, we should be getting the first round of the utility plans, which are water, sewer, and stormwater uh, in early August. So those will be actual appendices, and then the summary will be in your capital facilities plan element. Um, the other one that I just want to highlight on also is um, school districts. Again, they are their own entity. They have their own governance, but we do want to reference them in our plans. Uh, we do collect school impact fees for the school districts, so they need to be um, cited in our documents. I think that covers it. So um, also, I hope you like the look of these documents because this is what we're working towards for the plan. Uh, it will be some white, so it's easy to read, lots of pictures, graphics, uh, tables. Uh, and that really is extremely, oh, yep. Chelsea. I was actually wondering about the look. Um, are we, is purple a color for us anymore? Because um, the new logo is, I'm, when will the new logo be implemented and is purple part of that? Yeah, that is a fantastic question. Um, before Becky left, I the last update I remember, it was gonna take us over a year to get it fully implemented. Um, but I can um, ask Deborah Knight, our city manager, uh, for her input. Excellent question because the, the logo, as you recall, is primarily blues. Right. And, and like, and there might be some green. I don't know if we revoted on that, but um, I don't think there's any purple. But I like the look of it. It looks really cool. Um, I just think that if we're going to be implementing that, it should be all cohesive with our um, signs as well that just went up. Great. Thank you. I have a uh, point of clarification. Yeah. So biannual is twice a year. Biennial is biennial. once every two years. Biennial. <laughs> Which biennial? Biennial, because uh, the city of Monroe has gone to a biennial budget. Okay. Um, the only way you could update your capital facilities plan. It, so there's there's two options. One is you do it as part of your annual cycle. The second option is the capital facilities plan specifically is given an exemption under the Growth Management Act, and that would occur at the time of a budget amendment. With the biennium right, budget, we have, there are no amendments that are occurring this year. There was one in 2023, which was the first of the two-year budget, but that's not a guarantee. So that's one thing that um, I will need to work on with our public works department. They can't, unless they're um, doing it consistent with the annual process, that other exemption may not exist just how because of how the city's doing the budget now. So that would be my only. In here, it was by annual. Oh, thank you. Gotcha. Is that immediate? Was that in the, the document itself or in my background? So page um, 15 of 42 in the PDF. So it's in the document. There's one reference to, uh, and then page 17 of 42 is another reference. That's Thank you for that, Kat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, Melanie. Hello. Hello. 
I apologize. You're okay. In amongst the yarn, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> My new yarn wall. Sorry, awesome. there's some noise in the background. I promise I can hear you guys fine. Um, but the with the logo, since they were kind of looking at blues and there's already blue in the logo, I'm wondering if there might not be a way to emphasize the blues more that way even if there are kind of some changes i imagine blue is something that'll stay in some form um but otherwise i also really like the overall look of it with the mostly white um and all that okay um, so the area that I would really like, besides general feedback in your homework assignment, is if you want to walk walk through the goals, um, policies, and actions. Um, the capital facilities begins on page 11. Um, the first goal is provide and maintain public services and facilities that support Monroe's growth projections through 2044, maximizes existing facilities, utilizes financing effectively, efficiently, and increases the social, economic, and physical well-being uh, and safety of all residents. Happy with that, okay. Um, I will not read through the policies and actions, but take a minute if you haven't read yet and let me know if you have any questions. Goal number two is ensure that public services services equitably meet current and future growth in the community. I'm sorry, what page are you on? Uh, it's page number 19 of 42. And then this, uh, this one has a couple, has one policy and three action items. And then goal number three, manage financial resources to ensure sufficient and appropriate funding allocations for capital facilities projects. Moving on to the utilities chapter. Same thing again, introduction, relationship to other plans, existing conditions, um, on this one, I will tell you some of the internal comments that um, I received from staff um, was that there seemed to be a lot of emphasis on Puget Sound Energy. And the reason for that is they gave us a lot of documentation. I have asked that uh, the PUD actually be put on the um, uh, higher on in the information because that is our primary provider of um, electricity. PSE is natural gas, but we most people would think of the PUD when you're talking energy in our community. So order will change a little bit. Yeah. Um, I know I read it in here somewhere. I can't remember exactly what it was under. Now, as we are going to move towards EV cars and we have to have EV charging stations, is that under utilities? Um, it could actually be under both because your electric grid would be covered by uh, PUD and possibly Puget Sound Energy. And I feel like the PSE information included um, a lot of that conversion to electricity as well as natural gas. But from an infrastructure standpoint, things that I would expect to see in our capital facilities element is, you know, um, like the future city hall should in include X number or you know, have a percentage dedicated to charging. The city of Monroe already allows that. In fact, the last one was uh, the Safeway parking lot. Those are relatively new. So we already encourage that. Um, now, is that funded federally or is that? That was private. private. Yeah. Um, gosh, I'm going to get this wrong, but I know um, when I was still working for the transit agency, there was a big push to um, electrify the I-5 corridor. So park and rides were, uh, there was grant funding back then, uh, 10, 15 years ago, um, but there was a push there to, to get better integration of the new charging stations. Um, 
I don't know what kind of grant opportunities are still out there. And it also gets complicated if you have a community that's um, by America only, because a lot of that technology comes from overseas. So, um, but if you want, I can. Yeah, I'm just curious because I, I don't know a lot about EV. Okay. But recently we rented a car that was EV and we really found the charging was a challenge. Oh, okay. How long it took. Uh -huh. I to have to wait to do it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering, I wasn't sure if that was a city, a state, federal thing that that takes care of that. I wasn't sure. Um, in Washington, there are some, um, it was like the governor's, um, gosh, again, this is, my memory is getting foggy over the years, uh, but there was a governor's initiative and there was, there was funding from Department of Commerce at one point as well, um, but I don't know specifically. It just seems like for a city, depending on the size of your city, it could be a big undertaking. Yeah. Well, most of it is is public now. The government has really pulled out of that. Um, private. Private, that's what I meant, sorry. Like, <laughs> any, 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 any charging station. Why you, I knew you meant. <laughs> yeah. Any, you had to pay for it. That the city owns charging stations would be, would be um, city property, not not accessed by the public, right? It would be just for- No. Um, so- um, I haven't seen any plans for Monroe right now, but for example, um, what was it? Well, Marysville, um, Everett's, Everett's a little bit different because their downtown is, or their city hall is in the middle of downtown. Um, Edmonds, they have uh, EV charging. So it could be a couple things. So you could have EV charging in your public parking area, which would be most likely privately operated. It would not be the city of Monroe, it would not be the vendor. Um, and then if the city is converting to EV, then we would have something behind the lock gates. So it's the potential of public gate and private. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna quickly walk through these goals for you. Um, lost track of my pages. Sorry about that. All right. So the first goal for utilities is support private utilities in providing quantity safe and moderate energy services equitably to households, residents, and businesses within Monroe. This one has three policies and several actions. The next one is continue advancing the city's solid waste and recycling management strategy to reduce solid waste and promote sustainable end-of-life practices, <clears throat> minimize environmental impact, encourage environmental justice practices, and promote safety and cost-effectiveness. All right, the next one is minimize env the environment and social impacts of utilities for Monroe. Next one is prepare the city's utility providers and services to be resilient and quickly recover in response to natural hazards or disasters. Uh, goal number five, identify financing opportunities to promote at the advancement of utilities. And that takes us to the end. These are pretty short. Um, a lot of the guts of this, the important pieces with the um, tables and financing, you'll be seeing with the full document in August. Ready? Um, so I was, I really was impressed with like some of the nine stuff, like nine one or nine two. Okay. Um, did this did this come from some of the old plan, and then the um, consultants made suggestions or? Did city staff like word this? How did all this come up? Because I think I think it's pretty good. All of the above. <laughs> so um, we started with the 2015 plan. Uh, the consultants then, uh, and and if you remember the 2015 plan, all of the goals and policies are in chapter two of the document. There aren't any goals and policies in the actual chapters. So the first thing we had to go through is figure out in those goals and policies if it wasn't clear where it should go. 
we started doing the sort. All right, does this really, um, what chapter should this go in? And then after that, the um, consultants went and drafted the plan and then we got it, staff got it, and it was also sent to um, senior leadership. So the city administrator, the mayor, um, all of the department heads, and two weeks they got about to review, do the same homework assignment that you have. And so a lot of edits have been made in that process. It was sent back to the consultant. And then, so you really have version two, the first official public version. And my other comment is, um, I would like to see a way that policy uh, is, I know the action items are like italicized, but then the numbers for them are bolded. It almost seems like, it, I don't know, somehow make the, what I would Reverse. normally see, yeah, it's like okay. policy and, you know, maybe that number bolded and find maybe a little bit bigger font or something. Maybe you're trying to not emphasize one over the other, but I mean, um, they kind of all run together. And obviously you, you're going to have the, the chart here so you can tell, okay, this is um, action item or policy, but it feels to me like they should be different. Like it should be obvious because they're different. So a little bit more somehow plot wise uh, making that and possibly even as a, a goal. I mean, I, you can you can tell that that's where you're supposed to look. So that's probably taking care of it, but okay. a little bit more messing around with that, I would say. Melanie. Um, yeah, so um, I like the wording in, in those goals um, for the most part as well. Um, and then just so that we're clear um, as a planning commission moving forward, the definition of equity did go to city council and was approved, correct? Were there, correct. Any, were there any changes made from the last time that we saw it or did it stay the same just so that we know what the, the running definition is of that um, as it's finalized for the work we do moving forward? Yep, the, the final definition that the planning commission forwarded was not further changed. Um, the equity statement was modified a little bit more. Um, it was shortened. And that, um, I think you've seen a couple of times, it's been integrated into the principles. So at the beginning, of, um, that's chapter two that I brought back, that was integrated in that chapter. So that, that would be handy if we had just a, sure. a little final draft, because I keep my Imagine Monroe like, as a separate thing in my folder, so I can always read yeah. back to it. You guys are really good about putting it integrated in the, in the documents you can see, but we have the equity statement sure. and, and definition and statement, then um, I can just keep it as a separate document. Absolutely. Right? Kelsey? Back to what Brandy was saying, the Parks and Rec document was laid out really great with the action and the policy, like that they were all together. It like was extremely clear on um, how they flowed together and like how they worked together. So I thought that would be maybe a good model to reflect the document after I know that someone else wrote it or something, but um, I thought they did that really well. So just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, if you can review it and have other comments, please forward to me or Hannah. And we made them uh, the 17th. Okay. So uh, I know we're in here tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we're we're getting there. <laughs> Did you have something else, Kelsey? No. Okay. Make it sure. Good. And Moving on to item 7.2, this is our uh, meeting development May monthly report. Anna? Yes. Okay, so since we didn't have our last meeting of the month, last month you're seeing the May department report for community development today. 
um, start with the highlights. We had eight detached dwelling unit building permits in May and three commercial TI that's down from April for the commercial TIs. 125 inspections, four code enforcement cases opened and 20 cases closed. That's up a bit from April for cases closed. Um, 145 total business licenses, 53 of those were new. For pre-application meetings, we had three pre-app meetings in the month of May. Um, we had uh, six townhomes on Main Street. Um, there's no address to that because there's no address assigned to that lot at this time. It was a proposal to build six new townhome units, garage on the first floor with living units on two additional floors above it. Uh, then a pre-application meeting for the lot next door to the unaddressed lot, which is the Rodland property. Um, it's a proposal to build 14 attached dwelling units on that property. Would the auto repair shop stay or not? In this proposal, um, the auto repair shop would not stay. Okay. Now, are those different sizes? Or they um, they didn't really go into the sizes of the units. It was more of a general site plan that they proposed. Yeah. Um, and then we had a pre app for a dog grooming business. It's a home occupation um, with bathing and grooming of pets and a carriage house on the property. The project highlight of the month is Garibaldi. Um, construction on the homes in the Garibaldi plat has started. The 90 lot plat slash PRD was initially applied for as preliminary plat back in 2018. And final plat was reported in February of 2024. Uh, building permit applications started coming in for detached dwelling units in October of 2023. And then we got a flood rush of them right before the building code update. They wanted to try and get as many building permits in before that code update. So I think we got 60 um, building permits in for Garibaldi right before that uh, building code update. I have a question. I heard that in that building code update is rescinded. The WUI code, Louis code okay. which is the Wild Life Urban Interface. And so those were like, weren't they coming out together? And the timeline for those were together. So part of it is not going to be in for, uh, is rescinded and part of it remains. Yeah, so the um, the energy code, the IV, IV international building code, international residential, residential code all got approved. Okay. The WUI code was held back and um, trying to remember two different things happened at the state level. Um, uh, oh, Department of Natural Resources was told or asked to redo the maps. And then there was also conversation um, about if it had if it had to be adopted or would it be in appendices because cities had different flexibility depending on how uh, we were required to adopt it. It's not so I would not assume it's gone gone. It's delayed. Um, moving on to our current projects. Um, the only real updates, um, I'm not sure what happened, but it looks like civil construction and building construction. Um, well, maybe we don't have anything in civil construction. Everything is in building construction right now. <laughs> maybe that's what happened. There. <laughs> um, under variances, you will see a new variance application slash reasonable use application has been applied for. Um, this is a reasonable use for short-term rental cabins within a critical areas buffer. Um, this is in the tourist commercial zone, so over by the airport. Um, and then a new boundary line adjustment. Um, this is a Garibaldi BLA. It's revising the width of lot 17 from 39.99 feet to the required 40 feet. So. And then here are the building permit charts for the month. Um, eight single family with detached dwelling unit permits were issued in May and the building department conducted 125 inspections. 
Um, some updates from the building department. Um, after a few attempts to fill our building inspector position, we are very, very, very pleased to have hired John Harper. Um, John has many years of experience in the construction industry, including civil dirt work, residential and commercial construction, public work inspection with a different jurisdiction, and building inspector with San Juan County. On that one, the other thing I would note is that because of John, we finally have Friday inspections available. I'm not sure if you all were aware, but that was put on hold for a month, two months? About three months, yeah. <laughs> three, three months, yeah. So that just um, got restarted last week. Yes, got it. So we're very happy to have John on our team. He's a great guy. Um, okay. And Circling back to what I mentioned with Garibaldi, we are continuing to work through the large number of permit applications we received with um, the new code deadline while updating checklists and handouts to better serve our residents. As far as code enforcement goes, um, Kevin and Leanne conducted a citywide temporary sign pickup on June 5th, um, collecting over 100 non-compliant slash non-permitted temporary signs um, temporary signs are held for 10 days per Monroe Municipal Code and then disposed of. And um, he's also keeping an eye on properties that are approaching the 12 inch vegetation requirement. Um, here are the new brick and mortar business license applications. Um, one of note that people may be excited about is Blazon KBBQ. I'm personally kind of excited about it. It's um, a Korean barbecue restaurant. So that's going in on State Route 2 over actually by Jing and L Barbecue. So going to be a lot of barbecue. By J and L barbecue. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Lewis and Clark is the official name of Lewis and May. Is that the business name of Lewis and May? Um, it's a different business. It is. Yeah. So they they have an office space. Okay. Um, in a different section of the building. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at that sometime. Um, no news on the comprehensive plan that shows on here, and it looks like no updates to annexations either. On both of those, you will have new information for two, mm -hmm. both the annexations and the comp plan. So next meeting. Any questions on this report? Um, I do want to follow up on the, the signs. Um, I know we had a quick conversation at our last meeting regarding the political signs. Um, again, it's just a reminder that because of the Gilbert case that went to the Supreme Court, the city of Monroe does not regulate political signs of the category. Our signs are either commercial or non-commercial, temporary or permanent. Um, Leanne Barr and Amy Bright are preparing a bunch of... Um, information that will be posted on social media. We'll go out in Monroe this week regarding what our requirements are, including coming to get uh, stickers from Hannah uh, for the allotted time that they can be up. Um, Leanne told me today, she now has the list of all the candidates. There are 90 of them. I can't remember, I thought she said there's like- 30 for governor. 30 running for governor, yeah. yeah. So there's, um, she, we do this every year, reach out to uh, their campaign office and give them their information for the city of Monroe. So we're gonna do that again, um, social media posts. So we're really trying hard to remind everybody that in Monroe, this is how it's done. And we have a court case that was decided so we cannot um, specifically regulate or give exemptions to political signs. These are our rules. Yeah, whatever Amy and Leanne have kind of put together for the message. It just needs to be reviewed by the city attorney one time. Oh yeah. Not every post. No, 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 no. Um, uh, the messaging that Amy typically um, communicates with 
parties who reach out or are complaining that we took their signs, um, she already has guidance from our city attorney. So, yeah. If you want that, I will include it in um, your next package. Just Not necessarily. Just didn't, I didn't want them to have to. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is, this is um, we we have been educated very well by our legal staff. So, yeah. Yes, I have one question while we're here. Yeah. Um, so on the code enforcement, where there's um, some properties approaching violation of 12 inch vegetation. I know we've talked before about like programs and referrals for people that aren't doing their yard work and maybe that can't or can't do home improvements and stuff. So um, is that part of the process for the non-compliant for action? It is not yet. Um, I know this is something that is important to um, our city administrator and then Rachel Adams, who's our, our title community service specialist. Um, so it's something that uh, they have heard is important to the community, but I do not believe it's up and running. Yet. I was curious, um, Liz, do you have any suggestions for local groups or organizations that might provide that service? Unfortunately, I don't. I don't have a lot of local resources. Okay. Sorry. I, I know it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great idea. I was just trying to think of how, how we could get started on that list. But if, if anybody has any suggestions, certainly pass them along to us. I know Chinook Lumber is a supporter of a nonprofit group that their employees and other volunteers go around and do home improvement projects. Um, you know, sometimes in the Herald, I think it's on Sundays, every once in a while it has like an insert that's about like um, seniors and stuff. And they have a lot of stuff in there that talks about um, groups that do that. And there's another place in town or in this area where it's an um, organization that meets volunteers with need. So she, I can't, it's like hope, hope matters or hope, I, I can't, maybe I'll find it, but um, I know she, she coordinates the need with people who want to help. Yeah, if you find those, yeah, go ahead and forward them. Appreciate it. Okay, okay. thank you. Move on to our discussion by Commissioner Staff. We'll start with our folks on Zoom. Uh, Commissioner Dawkins. Thank you, staff, for everything you do. Um, the 4th of July was really fun. Monroe has a really fun fireworks policy of not having one. Um, they were all <laughs> over. <laughs> um, I had a a bunch of people came over and we got to just have fireworks in the backyard. So it was really nice. Um, been seeing a lot of the community members out. So um, I hope everyone had a good 4th of July and is staying cool. Yes. Uh, reiterating what Commissioner Dawkins said about thanks for the presentations and all the information from staff. I know my son and his friends went to music at the park this last week, and they said there were a lot of people and it was a lot of fun. So that was great. Um, yeah, and we always have a vibrant Fourth uh, of July, <laughs> despite the fact my puppy hated it, but she survived. <laughs> so that's all I got. Melanie. Thank you uh, um, also from me for um, staff and all the information that you're always providing for us. And um, I'm finally getting over what I found out has been about two months worth of bronchitis. So that's good. Um, but I missed music in the park because of it. But I could hear it from my house, which was good. Um, and then this was our first fourth um, owning a puppy. So that was an adventure. He did good until the sun went down. He was okay with the sporadic stuff, but once that's something, nope, that was too much. 
and I don't blame him. Um, but otherwise, I'm I'm just really glad that the sun's out, the heat's out, and um, ask me again tomorrow, and I will be probably less happy about it. But <laughs> my kids are enjoying it, and so hopefully everybody's staying safe and finding ways to stay cool. Um, if anybody needs resources during all this heat, there's always places to stay cool, like the senior center and other other places. I think the city did the city post those. Was it the city? I think the city posted the resources for cooling down, but um, yeah. Anyway, thank you, staff, and thank you, fellow commissioners. Yeah. Lance. You're on mute. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I was just, I was looking to see if they, if that had been posted, the um, cooling resources on the city's website. I'd I'll take a look at it before this meeting is over. Uh, one thing I wanted to add as update, I guess, for projects from community development is we have had the development agreement submitted by the PUD for the property, the um, first airfield property that they were looking to purchase. And the city has been reviewing the development agreement, which is an agreement between the city and and the applicant about a variety of different things related to specifically related to review issues um, and regulatory issues specifically uh, the vesting of the zoning regulations for the length of development agreement which would be for 10 years there are some other elements as well the city owns property that is adjacent to first airfield and the city has an interest in um, using that property as passive recreation and potentially as um, trail corridors and connections to other facilities. Like so uh, where the city, all the city departments are in the process of reviewing the development agreement and ultimately it's a decision that uh, gets made by the city council. And so it, it, does not go to the planning commission for a recommendation. So I just it's it's a little bit of a different type of application than we normally than we deal with. Um, it's a quasi judicial decision by council, but I'll I'll keep the planning commission updated on the progress of that. And certainly, when we do schedule a meeting with the city council, I suspect the first one will be. Uh, sort of a work session, sort of education piece on it, because development agreements are not something that we do on a regular basis. But I guess bottom line is that that project for now is moving forward, and I will keep um, that information up there. Thank you. Bob? I really enjoyed the uh, block party that was in June. That was fun. Uh, I look forward to that next year and perhaps expanding it, having a little bit more things to do, but it still was was very, uh, very enjoyable. And any chance we get to bring people into our downtown uh, is, is, is well, it's time well spent from the city's perspective. So uh, staff did a great job. The city did a great job. Um, Survived the fourth. Um, seemed like every spare plot of spare, of spare dirt was taken up in my neighborhood by somebody shooting off full commercial type of fireworks. Um, there was no houses were caught. No houses were caught on fire, and and no brush fires occurred. So I think we were we were pretty pretty okay. Uh, but uh, I, I'd like to ask. My neighbors, when you're done with your fireworks, you please clean up your mess. Take your garbage out. Take it off the street. Don't park. pile it in the curb. You know, who's who's going to come and pick that up? The city won't come and pick that up. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Bob. Carla? And I'd like to express so thank you, the staff, for everything that you guys do and all the information and taking all the questions and and whatnot. It's great. I appreciate it. Um, and then kind of on that, I know like we have homework and um, I'm not great at sending in stuff. It's like I'm not really quite sure yet, like what 
I want to send in, I guess. So I was wondering if others are sending in, not that I care who, who it is, but can we get some type of feedback of what the feedback is that's coming in on top of it so we can kind of... Oh, like you want just like kind of like a inventory of the kind of comments? Yeah, or so we can kind of see that. Like I said, I don't care who the you know, we don't need to know who the person is or whatever, but yeah, just sure. kind of see what the, some of the ideas. I know for me, it really gets me thinking on other, on other things when I listen to other people talk about okay. different things. On that, all I ask is that if you are sending comments into staff, do not CC planning commissioners. Yes. Because that will start a quarum and then I have to notice <laughs> notice of potential quorum. And right. so just only send it to staff and then yeah. we will distribute it. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I, just I think it yeah. gets my brain going on things though. Um and but yeah, I think it's been good. You know, I I we were here last year for the fourth, and I think this year it seemed like there was so much more. Um, in our area, like I, you didn't have to go anywhere for the fireworks. I, I tell I you, in our area, broke full blown. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. It was yeah. Just, I don't know where it was coming from, but it was there. I mean, just yeah, just sitting at the end of our driveway. But um, I, I will say that it was super neat though to see how many people were just out, and we had several families that had their kids in wagons or different things, just kind of walking through and. And be able to say hi to people. I, I just thought that was, uh, I, I really enjoyed that part of it, I guess, the most. And, but, you know, it was beautiful. I, I know in my immediate area, all of our neighbors picked it up to themselves. But I know on our Facebook for our group, there was a lot of complaints on it. So I, it but I'll tell you. Yeah, I, I took a picture of it. <laughs> all of the neighbors Heights me, Facebook page. I said, they were come on, people. We can do better than this. Uh, the only thing, as I, as I was telling Jay, is the next morning, my car had so much debris on it. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. I mean, I've never had that before, of course, like that. So, um, not that it hurt anything. But no, it, but I had to take it as a car wash for that. <laughs> it was totally fine. But again, thanks. Um, it's nice to see everyone. I don't have any other comments today. <laughs> well, are we not yeah. feeling well? Today? Yeah. Are you, yeah. Are you dehydrating? Are you keeping up on your water? Don't see. Sorry, I forgot to say. Um, on two hundred three, there's a new roundabout. Um, where Duval, yeah. and I'm not sure what road that is, and it went in really fast, and it's working really well, and it like inspired i feel inspired that we can get that something like that done in on lewis and maine um it's like one of those flat ones so it didn't seem like there was much construction i don't know if that would work in town because of trucks going through there and the intersection you have to be small. alert because if you're not paying attention you could miss it because but it's the trip so is like rounded so you're just gonna be a little bumpy i feel like yeah, you can go straight over the, media, the center part of the lawn i suppose <laughs> Yeah, there's not enough signs up for it to slow down and stuff yet, but um, I feel like they did a good job on it and it's really working. So roundabouts work. They certainly do. People don't like them, but they're they're better than stuff signs. They work, but this if you haven't, I have just like I don't know what we need to do to do that in on Lewis and Maine or who to talk to or I know that a lot of people comment on that. Is there any hope that that would ever happen there? No. I, <laughs> no, never. It, it, yeah. No, it, it, it's because of the width of the right of way, and you have it's a truck route. Yep. So there's yeah, like the, yeah, the yeah round, be able to go through. They they are great, but they don't work everywhere, unfortunately. <clears throat> I need some okay. nice speed bumps. Okay. okay, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I saw Bob and his wife at the block party. It was fun. So, it's, you see it's to, uh, didn't see anybody else. So, uh, what's wrong, guys? Well, they were there. They just Randy was there. Randy, I said Randy or Jay. So, Randy and Jay. I, I was. I can't remember now why. Uh -huh. we saw city staff there, which was always great. So people would stop and chat about the. There was a staff table. Was there a table there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lance and I were there. That was long ago. <laughs> Oh, you can see community development out. Oh, well, that's a line. Yeah. Uh, I also do not share 
your enthusiasm for fireworks. So we left him. I was sarcastically <laughs> saying it was infinitely better. I love fireworks if people have restraint, but when it's 2.30 or whatever a.m. and they're still, you know, they wasted their entire paycheck at Boom City and they're still going off at 2.30 too much. Of it. So as long as they don't blow their hands off. We had an entirely quiet time in Leavenworth. Yeah. It's fantastic. I, mean, I think if you want a, a bright side, maybe that for one night a year, we sound like we're in a war zone. Because that's what it sounds like to be like in, in Kiev and Ukraine, with all the booms and all that stuff. And I just, I don't get it. But that's just me. That's all. And thank you, Steph. Thank you, Steph. Um, I have a laundry list tonight. <laughs> Um, first, I wanted to give you, um, there were some activities at the council I wanted to make you aware of. Uh, the first one is the city council has decided not to move forward on any changes to the marijuana rules, so they will remain prohibited in the city of Monroe. Um, the city is, on the flip side, reassessing red light cameras, specifically in school zones. Um, I'm sure they'll, you'll hear more as that moves forward. Um, I do have some homework of my own. I promised I was going to get you information about the National Historic Homes and how that works. Did not get to that, um, so a future meeting. Um, I did want to let you know, successfully got all the materials in, so the city was reimbursed a total of $125,000 for the comp plan through the Department of Commerce. <laughs> The downtown commercial code amendments are on hold. Um, the city council had the same concerns that the planning commission had regarding the criteria specifically for conditional uses on the promenade. So we have been directed to go back and really think, um, be thoughtful about creating specific criteria when considering a conditional use permit in the promenade. And so that would be um, all of the government uses, and then the, um, oh my gosh, the organizations, just forgot what it's called. Fraternal organizations. No, that wasn't the name, but no. it's the, it's the chamber, or the chamber, or okay. membership. Yes. Nonprofit. Member, member, membership organizations. Thank you. Um, so that is on hold while oh, staff um, reassesses, and then there was, um, I feel like there's something else. So anyway, we'll keep you updated on that. Um, I did want to let you know we, we we covered the Monroe 30 in the packet, and I talked about it last time, but I did want to let you know they have successfully submitted their 60% petition, and it has been certified by the city, uh, uh, Snohomish County Assessor's Office. So the next step would be um, public hearing at the city council. Like the PUD, um, we are expecting a development agreement to be submitted any day. We have been uh, working with the applicant's proponent to come up with a pre-annexation agreement. The city council was very clear that that needed to address um, different types of housing. There was concerns about road circulation and ensuring that the city gets the land dedication for the park that has been identified in that part of the community. So I'll just keep you updated as that moves forward. Um, I did want to let you all know, you can check out the Monroe 2044 game board. Brandy checked one out. So if you're interested, let me know and I can bring it to a future um, planning commission meeting for you. And then uh, my 4th of July, I always love my little neighborhood. We put on a children's parade every year. So my job has always been go collect the decorations and help the kids do their bikes and their scooters and their wagons and police department comes and lasts for 15 minutes and then everybody meets up the cul-de-sac and eats watermelon and wow. drinks soda. That's cool. That's cool. So, don't hear that. It was quiet. It was quieter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Anna? Um, I, for one, did blow a paycheck at Boom City. <laughs> Um, but I had a great 4th of July. I had a lot of fun at the block party. I saw Brandy there. Um, so that was a good time. Um, 
community development staff will be at the farmer's market next week. Um, so you can find us there. We have a couple more outreach events um, coming up this summer. So we have two farmer's markets that community development will be at. Uh, we also have National Night Out, I believe in August. And then in September, we will be at Bologna. So just keep an eye out for us there. Um, I'll be at farmer's market next week, so. <laughs> um, other than that, I was really looking forward to the Renaissance Fair starts um, the 19th. So you ready for traffic? <laughs> Same place as last year. Same place as last year. Okay. Just up there behind the high school, so out in the fields. So looking forward to it. One more note specifically for Jay and um, Brandy, the next CAC meeting is on July 25th. You, I think we're trying to coordinate Reminder emails, Lance, is that right? We're going to do that sooner than later? Yes. Don't report to anybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been forever since you received the original applica meeting invitation. I did want to add, so I did look on the city's website in regards to the uh, hot weather advisory and information it is on the city's website if you just go to the home page there's general information there about heat advisories and there's also a list of uh local resources i believe the library senior center the, the church that does the warming the warming center in the winter as well so if anybody is interested or you want to pass that along to other folks organizations Thanks, Lance. Would anybody care to move for adjournment? Move to adjourn. Okay, great. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good meeting. Thank you, folks. <laughs>